Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Bomb & Mercier with the Riviera Balmatic with its five-day power reserve. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as an authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description down below to the product page where you can learn more, and of course, purchase the watch. But guys, without further ado, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at this watch. So today we're taking a look at a watch from Bomb & Mercier, a brand that I would say is in many respects underrated considering the level of watchmaking going on and their position in the marketplace. Now Bomb & Mercier was founded in 1830 in Switzerland, with the brand now residing underneath the larger umbrella of the Richemont Group, a collection of brands that also includes the likes of JLC, Langa, Vacheron Constantin, IWC, and Cartier, just to name a few. Generally speaking, Bomb & Mercier is positioned among Richemont's pillars to act as that gateway to luxury option with an emphasis on value for dollar, both in terms of finishing and the calibers that are residing within their pieces. And while B&M has largely leaned into third-party calibers in recent years, in 2018, the brand unveiled a new proprietary movement at SIHH within the Clifton Balmatic Collection after five years of research and development. And while the Clifton in many ways operates as B&M's dressier and more traditional option, the Riviera is a model family that originated back in 1973 and was revived last year, providing a sportier option that is on trend with the integrated bracelet. Today we'll be taking a look at the Riviera Bombatic, a modern sports watch with the Bombatic movement on the inside with an extended power reserve of five days. Now on wrist, the 42 millimeter wide by 50.9 millimeter long Riviera case represents a wearing experience that certainly leans towards the larger end of the spectrum. Still, even with its sizing in mind, the Riviera is likely to wear well in a wide range of wrists with the overall wearing experience being much improved thanks to the relatively slender 10.9 millimeters in case height. And given the 42 millimeter width, the Riviera wears, I would say true to size and will probably work best for wrist sizes at least 6.5 inches and above or 16.5 centimeters and up. One aspect that does alter the wearing experience to some extent is the nature of the first center link of the bracelet where it meets the case, which is relatively fixed in position and does extend to a theoretical lug to lug span of around 54 to 55 millimeters. Though it's sharply downswept nature means that this is not an accurate uh, suggestion of what this is actually going to wear like on the wrist, but it's certainly something to consider. Another point that makes this watch not wear to that full theoretical lug to lug dimension is that the appearance of the bracelet and lugs is a seamless transition. So if you look at the central case, where the integrated bracelet is actually going to technically meet those lugs, it almost looks as if it's part of the bracelet itself. So it does trick the eye in making it appear that that's not actually a real thing. And if sizing is a concern, it's also fair to point out that there is a smaller 36 millimeter Riviera models, both with quartz and automatic options, though the 36 millimeter automatic version does rely on a third party caliber from Solita, as opposed to the Balmatic movement that we have here. Now case architecture is largely angular, offering prominent facets along the case sides and the edges of the 12 sided bezel that is affixed with four hex head screws. Though it displays a majority brush finish, the edges of the bezel do offer subtle hits of polishing that naturally attract the eye in brighter conditions. At three, a 7.3 millimeter eight sided crown lies without safety of crown guards with the machine channel traveling its circumference. Between the crown and the case back, which is also fixed with four screws, the Riviera is rated to 100 meters of water resistance. Keeping the watch in place while also providing one of this watch's single most strong selling propositions, we have an integrated bracelet that meets at the central case at a prominent 11 millimeter wide interlinks that are equipped with an easily operated quick release mechanism. Now the bracelet itself is composed of solid stainless steel screw adjusted three link in its design that takes the basic architecture from something like the Rolex Oyster Perpetual bracelet and adapts it to a more integrated take. Now the majority of this bracelet exhibits vertical brushing while tapering from a broad 24 millimeter where the bracelet meets the case to a 20 millimeter in a hidden push button deployment clasp that is signed with B&M's logo on its outer surface. Constructed with polished and milled components, the clasp operates well, though unfortunately lacks half links or other methods of micro adjustment, which means finding the perfect fit might be difficult for some, and I think a bigger challenge when you're dealing with this integrated style design. Overall, there was a clear emphasis though on finishing of this piece across the bracelet and the case itself, with the Riviera standing out compared to some other offerings from the brand and being well positioned in a watch in this $3,500 range. Now, one thing that B&M did exceptionally well with this piece was the adjustment and thinking about how can you interchange different straps with this watch. 
Here you have a tab on the back of the bracelet as well as the other straps that will allow you to just press down and then pull the strap away. And then in the same way, sliding underneath in the direction upwards will then lock the bracelet back in position with very little effort. This is probably one of the best I have seen in the industry across the board and very well done from an engineering perspective. Zeroing in on the watch's anterior surface and set beneath the safety of a flat sapphire crystal, we have one of the more avant-garde dial designs being offered in this price range and category, blending likely polarizing translucent properties with more traditional and refined elements. Starting at the dial's outskirts, it's important to note that the watch lacks anything resembling a sloping rehot or chapter ring, also leaving behind the additional time-telling utility offered by any type of minute track. Applied and polished indices are supplied everywhere, but at noon and six, with those positions being inhabited by oversized Roman numerals oriented around the dial center, which is to say that the six o'clock hour marker is upside down for all intents and purposes. A stylized Dauphine style handset is again executed in polished steel with a small skeletonized element near the base of each hand. This being a sportier design at the end of the day, the Riviera opts for luminescent material on the dial and hands that while is useful, is not overly impressive for its incandescence, but certainly will do the job. Executed in translucent sapphire, the dial surface in certain light Lighting condition presents a more straightforward navy blue option, and when under direct sunlight or light, it's going to show that more translucent look. And with that translucent dial, you do have a small peek into the Balmatic five-day movement that you will see when you flip this watch around. Now set beneath the safety of that exhibition case back and complete with its own sapphire crystal, we do have that clear view of that BM131975A. Following in the footsteps of the manual 1830 caliber debuted in 2017, a move which marked the first use of a silicon balance spring produced by a Richemont Group brand, the in-house Balmatic caliber that was produced with Richemont's Valfleurier uh, movement manufacturing arm showcases some surprising technical up-spec that argues most strongly in favor of this watch's price point. Like its manual predecessor, the Balmatic caliber offers a silicon balance spring set with a free-sprung balance assembly and adds a skeletonized silicon escapement wheel with a silicon lever, in turn bringing the magnetic resistance of this caliber to a very capable 1500 gauss. Yet perhaps even more notable than the peace of mind delivered by the higher level of magnetic resistance, the escapement is also optimized to a degree to extract a lengthy 120 hour power reserve while still operating off of a single barrel and also operating at a four hertz beat rate, which really allows this to be a industry leading movement for the price category. This example was also running within cost parameters and this movement is also commonly sent in for COSC certification with this example running at plus two to plus five seconds a day when testing across five different positions. And then looking beyond the technical acumen of the movement, it also offers at least some level of elevation in its visual aesthetic with a variety of machine finishing techniques. It has a skeletonized and signed rotor and it's complete with Geneva waves and a deeper outer edge that rotates with a channel surrounding the central bridges, which are themselves complete with micro perlage. There are also a few polished screw heads, some directional graining at the base plate circumference and other subtle hints of polishing throughout. And although this isn't going to be the most elevated looking movement in the world, compared to the price range again, which I always am kind of mentioning when talking about this piece, it's still very well stacked up and nice to see some up finish in a range that typically is all about just the utilitarian finish techniques. So now to unpack looking at the Bomb and Mercier Riviera Balmatic. First, when looking at this watch, I think many people are going to quickly mention that this looks very similar to the likes of a Royal Oak or a Nautilus or something from that integrated family of watches. The one interesting thing about the Riviera family is that it came out one year after the release of the Royal Oak. And at the time of the release of that, I would imagine that some of the design uh, thought process was already well on its way when the Royal Oak was unveiled, considering that many of these watches when they were released typically take 18 to 24 months from a manufacturing side to actually get something to market. So there is some backstory and history here with B&M and them being able to have their own ownership of a design of this style. And now, of course, following that trend that has become very popular uh, in this modern day of watchmaking. But even with that being the case, I think some people potentially could still put this watch down because of that. You do have the size element here and then also the loom maybe not being the best, but there's a reason why I think this watch is rather underrated and just Bomb and Mercier is very underrated. I think you have to look at this bombatic version for the reason why. Now the case and its finishing in the integrated bracelet, the on the fly adjustment is phenomenal. I think they did a wonderful job with just how it looks, how it feels. It feels very much the part of a watch that's priced in this segment. 
But I think the number one thing and why this watch is an underrated gem is the movement on the inside. And this is why I think the Valmatic version probably is going to make more sense, or at least be better positioned in separating from the competition compared to the Salita versions. That's because of that five day power reserve with that movement. That is industry leading for this price segment. And then also coming with a four Hertz movement off of a single barrel, getting some up finishing techniques in the process. This is going to allow it to be very well positioned in the marketplace. And even with the Balmatic Clifton or the Clifton Balmatic, pardon me, when that was released, the same upside happened there. And I think with a sports option that's going to lean more into what is the norm now and what is popular now, I think this combination is a winning formula and something to get behind for Bauman Mercier, of course, following a trend that's in. I think if you are looking for a sub $5,000 integrated bracelet watch that is going to look the part and also have a movement on the inside that's going to allow to separate from the many that are trying to throw their hat in the ring, this certainly has a market and is an underrated one that maybe people are not considering enough if that does classify you and what you're looking for in your next watch. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That does help out the channel. But also, if you're in the market for the watch presented in this video, it is available on teddybaldister.com. We're a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factor warranty for all the new products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all next time.